right, so uh, Will and I's marriage did not end one day. It took time to get there and you do the work. You had to do that in front of everybody, but it's the same. And I am disappointed when people judge that and don't understand especially when there are children involved. Yeah. I think everything is different when you have children. I think, you know, the very fact that I wasn't even 12 weeks pregnant, I mean, I, yes, the first time it happened with Anthony, the story broke. Number one, I was still deeply in love with my husband. I was also in shock. I also didn't understand the behavior, but yes, it would have been so much easier to just walk away, except that we share this child together. And I walked in so much shame for so long. I write a whole chapter about this feeling like the elephant in the room not knowing where I was welcome. It's just a horrible feeling. I think a lot of women feel like they're judged for Okay, decisions. you just brought up a really trigger key point, shame. Mm. I have a circumstance that I thought of you. Mm. I was walking out of my OBGYN and um, I had just found out I was pregnant. And um, mm. I walked out of her office and Someone I work with, Chris Miller, got all these calls. We know she's pregnant, we're breaking the story. He's like, you guys always talk like this. We're at a no comment group, come on, you're being silly. And they're like, well, take a look at this. And it's the picture. And I was stupid enough to carry the sonogram in my hand out with me. I was depressed or saddened, kind of, that I didn't get to um, have that be a, a private thing, a moment, or just to wrap my head around it. Is it true that you, one of your toughest phone calls was, of all that you had to deal with, was about your pregnancy? I was, uh, I don't want to say eight weeks pregnant. The story I tell about being in Buckingham Palace, three days later, the story breaks about Anthony being in communication online with other women. And two days later, I get a phone call from my friend, Philippe. He said, uh, this is a very awkward conversation for me, but you know, the New York Times has called and they're about to report that you're pregnant. And um, is there anything you wanna share? And he obviously didn't know. And I was so mad. I had so much rage. I felt like this deep, this secret, I hadn't told anybody. I told, we told our parents and our siblings. And so um, he said, do you wanna, you know, do you wanna tell Hillary? Do you wanna call people? I said, no, I dare them. I dare them to run this story. I'm not even 12 weeks pregnant. And of course they did. And I was so shattered, I was so broken by not being able to share what for me was a once in a lifetime gift. Yes. That till today, today, and I did it yesterday in the kitchen, that I wander around and when I'm in the shower or shopping, I'll just say I'm pregnant. And I say it because I never got to say it <clears throat> before. Um, and yesterday, Jordan said to me, Mommy, you're pregnant? <laughs> and I'm like, no, 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 no. And, but it, it reminds you that there are things that do stay with you. I so appreciate hearing that because it's not always what you expect is the moment. Yeah. Here's what I mean. So when I got that phone call from Chris Miller of, I got to tell you something, something is coming out. Um, it wasn't the pregnancy I feared. It was being caught drinking. And I felt like this was my mm -hmm. shame. Um, and I was almost relieved when it wasn't that. When people find out your deepest, darkest secrets, and I experienced that when I was 13 years old and got outed and thrown into an institution and career over, I, was, I, I have such PTSD from that that I think if someone's gonna catch me drinking again, I'm gonna lose my career. I'm gonna lose my job that I love so much. And it's so traumatizing. And that was my thing. And it carries with it so much shame. Yeah. How did you deal with that? The first time Anthony and I sat down after his first, you know, the first revelation about his communication with women online, I felt, and we went away, we went to Texas to therapy. I didn't understand anything. I didn't understand anything about, you know, behavior that you couldn't control. I didn't understand addiction. I didn't know anybody growing up really who w was divorced or split up. We, these weren't things you talked about in the Middle East. Mm -hmm. and I felt like the minute it was all out, he seemed so relieved. He was like almost like an unburdening. And he said, well, how do I stop the behavior and how do I fix it? And I fully believed he could knock it off. 100% thought in 2011 when this first happened, he could just stop. 
And then we learn later when he ran for mayor of New York City in 2013, when there was another revelation that he clearly couldn't stop it. So every time I would get a call, whether it was from Anthony or Philippe, as we talked about, Every time it was a call or a text saying, this tabloid called, or I have to tell you something, it is well, how bad is it? And, and living within this world of, it's not gonna be as bad as I think it is, it's gonna be worse, because it always was. And that's why in 2019, and I do share the story in the book of really when I got to the end of my, I couldn't, you know, I contemplated stepping off a subway platform. It was really my low of the low. And when I did that, there were two things that came, really came to me as number one, all of this holding everything and all of this anger and bitterness was only hurting me. It's something I later learned with Anthony in therapy is that while pain might be necessary, suffering is optional. Yeah. We have to go to another commercial really quickly, but we will be right back.